Hey everybody, welcome back to the Tech Gaming and AI News Nerdcap of the Week. This week we have Steam on an Xbox, Roblox 3D Modeler, iPhone 17 leaks, a robot hand, a new VR system that I'm super excited for, and Doom in a Porsche. Let's get started. Google has unveiled the Pixel 9a, a mid-range smartphone with a 6.3 inch OLED display, high refresh rate, enhanced brightness, and a IP68 rated build. It's powered by the Tensor G4 chip and comes with 8 gigabytes of RAM and offers a 128 gigabytes or a 256 gigabyte storage options. Uh, the device features a 48 megapixel camera and a 13 megapixel ultra wide lens and a 13 megapixel selfie camera, along with a 5100 milliamp battery that supports fast wireless charging. Uh, Google promises seven years of Android OS and security updates, which is awesome. Uh, they're going to be starting at a price of $499 for the 128 gigabyte and $599 for the 256 gigabyte. However, the release has been postponed to April due to some issues with uh, component quality. Uh, but let me know in the comments below, is this something that you're excited to pick up? I might actually pick one up because I need a dumb phone um, to replace this on days I don't want to carry this brick around. But uh, definitely let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Google has announced that its new AI assistant, Gemini, will replace the current Google Assistant on mobile devices. Gemini leverages advanced language understanding and reasoning to offer more natural conversational interactions with key features that include advanced AI capabilities, uh, seamless integration that's accessible through various Google platforms with a dedicated app for iOS and Android, uh, and real-time voice interactions. So the Gemini Live feature that enables real-time natural voice conversations using your device's microphone and speakers. If you haven't tried this, it's really, really cool. I suggest that you do. but. This upgrade is actually really, really cool. Something that you can already do. So if you say, hey, you know what? Um, I don't want to set off all of my devices, but if you say, hey, hey, Bob, <laughs> uh, it'll actually go and use a Gemini instead if you if, if it's something you already pay for. But it's really exciting to see that this is something that they're bringing to the table. Google's Notebook LM now features interactive mind maps, which convert key concepts from your notes into visual branching diagrams. The enhancements allow you to do and visualize information, navigate all of that information with ease, especially if you have steps involved, you can go uh, from top to bottom and just keep zooming and zooming and zooming down through all your steps or through anything that you've researched. And you can have a super deep understanding of things, identifying hidden connections and patterns that aren't obvious if you just have them written on a page. But uh, this is definitely something that's really cool. And if you haven't used Notebook LM yet, definitely go try it. It's it's really cool. I actually have a, a YouTube video where I did the news with them doing the podcast, uh, the AI that is included in the, uh, the Notebook LM features. But definitely go check them out. Let me know what your thoughts are on this in the comments below. Is it something that you're excited to use? Microsoft appears to be exploring greater platform integration by potentially incorporating Steam into the Xbox ecosystem. A briefly published image shows a new Xbox interface featuring a Steam filter and the user's game library hinting that PC games could be visible and playable on the Xbox app across devices. This move aligns with Xbox chief Phil Spencer's vision of a more open console platform and a unified experience across Windows and Xbox with uh, persistent rumors suggesting that a partnership with Valve might bring Steam to the next gen Xbox console. Uh, is this something that you're excited for? I personally prefer Steam over anything Xbox, so I would actually love this and love to be able to just jump on my Xbox on the TV in the living room if I wanted to play a game. But yeah, definitely let me know what you think below. Roblox has introduced Cube3D, an AI-driven model that streamlines 3D asset creation by generating objects and environments from a simple text prompt. For example, entering a description like a vintage green couch with green lines and velvet material produces a matching mesh 3D. This model features real-time integration with Roblox experiences via its mesh generation API, allowing dynamic customization. Moreover, Roblox has open-sourced Cube3D, enabling external developers to experiment 
and enhance the technology even further. Looking ahead, Roblox plans to extend Cube 3D's functionality to include scene generation and understanding, creating interactive virtual environments that adapt to user interactions. This innovation is set to lower the barriers to 3D content creation, which is super freaking sick, empowering both experienced developers and newcomers to bring their creative visions to life more efficiently. At GTC 2025, NVIDIA introduced two new AI chip architectures, Blackwell Ultra and Rubin, to boost AI processing across various applications. Blackwell Ultra features enhanced memory capacity to support larger AI models and is set to release in the second half of 2025. The Rubin architecture, however, promises a significant performance leap over previous generations with the launch expected in 2026. And a follow-up iteration, Vera Rubin Ultra. Wow, the naming schemes are getting kind of crazy here, guys. <laughs> uh, which is planned for 2027. Additionally, NVIDIA announced plans to invest several hundreds of billions of dollars in U.S. manufacturing over the next four years, reinforcing its commitment to onshoring and advancing AI technology and infrastructure here in the United States. But let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Intel has appointed a new CEO, marking a significant leadership change for the chip giant. According to industry articles, the new chief executive brings extensive industry experience and a fresh strategic vision aimed at reinvigorating Intel's efforts in advanced semiconductor manufacturing, AI integration, and global competitiveness. This leadership transition is part of Intel's broader strategy to address market challenges and capitalize on emerging opportunities in the rapidly evolving tech landscape. Do you think a new CEO is just what the doctor ordered for Intel? Let me know in the comments below. Meta's open sourced AI model collection, Llama, has surpassed 1 billion downloads, a rapid increase from 650 million in December of 2024 to over 1 billion by March of 2025. This milestone highlights Llama's broad adoption and versatility, with users like Spotify and, star and startups leveraging it for various AI projects. Meta underscores its commitment to open sourcing AI to foster innovation and collaboration worldwide. However, Despite this achievement, Meta's stock closed at $582, near a three-month low amid broader market challenges. Let me know in the comments below, is Llama something that you use? Waymo's autonomous vehicles in San Francisco have received 589 parking tickets in 2024, amounting to $65,000 in fines. The violations such as blocking traffic, ignoring street cleaning instructions and parking in prohibited areas stem largely from two main issues, mapping limitations and regulatory gaps. Potential solutions include enhanced collaboration between autonomous vehicle companies and, and cities to ensure up-to-date parking regulations and integrating real-time data through APIs to guide parking decisions. Addressing these issues is critical for seamlessly integrating autonomous vehicles into urban settings while ensuring compliance and local rules. I'm definitely curious what your guys' thoughts are on this. Uh, do you think Tesla is going to have the same issue uh, in June or July when they launch this in Austin, Texas? Let me know in the comments below. Apple is facing a federal class action lawsuit in San Jose over alleged false advertising and unfair competition related to its delayed Apple intelligence features, especially the enhanced Siri capabilities. This lawsuit claims that Apple's extensive marketing, highlighted by an ad featuring Bella Ramsey, set consumer expectations for AI advanced features that were not delivered at launch. This, according to the complaint, gave Apple an unfair advantage over its competitors and misled buyers of iPhones and other devices. In response to the delay, Apple removed the advertisement from YouTube and updated its website with disclaimers. Of course they did. The lawsuit brought to you by the Clarkson Law Firm, which has previously targeted other tech companies over AI practices, underscores the challenges of aligning product marketing with actual capabilities in the fast evolving field of AI. I think this is awesome. I definitely think Apple was false advertising and was uh, involved in unfair competition because how many people went out there and bought it because of this? And then six months later, a year later, 
it gets delayed another year, but definitely let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Recent leaks hinted notable design shifts in Apple's upcoming iPhone 17 lineup, particularly the iPhone 17 Air and iPhone 17 Pro Max. The iPhone 17 Air is gonna come with an ultra thin design. The display is expected to support a 6.9 inch OLED screen. The camera layout, however, and leaked mockups reveal a horizontal camera bar on the back, similar to how the Google Pixels design is. Um, and then the iPhone 17 Pro Max, the dimensions are likely to remain the same. Uh, and the camera design, uh, based on dummy models at least, uh, has been redesigned slightly and actually expanded, featuring a central camera bump instead of a traditional corner alignment. So both models are expected to share the same length, width, screen size, and bezel dimensions, uh, differing mainly in thickness, which uh, Apple, no one cares about, make it thicker put a bigger battery in there, make the cameras better, get rid of the camera bump, please for the love of God. <laughs> but uh, definitely let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Is this something that you're excited to see later this year when they do release? Apple plans to roll out end-to-end -end encrypted RCS messaging across iOS, iPad, macOS, and watchOS in the upcoming software updates. This will ensure that messages exchanged between iPhone and Android users are secured so only the sender and the recipient can read them. This move aligns with industry efforts led by the GSM Association to adopt E2EE in RCS, an upgraded SMS standard that supports features like high resolution media sharing, read receipts, and typing indicators. Although Apple hasn't provided a specific release date, this initiative underscores its ongoing commitment to enhancing user privacy and secure cross-platform messaging. Japanese researchers have created a biohybrid robotic hand powered by a lab-grown human muscle tissue. A breakthrough in robotics. This is actually crazy. Um, the hand features a 3D printed plastic base integrated with tendons made from human muscle, which allows for a natural flexible movement from a robot using multiple muscle tissue actuators say that 10 times fast it can perform individual finger motions precise gestures and object manipulation highlighting its potential for lifelike prosthetics and advanced humanoid robots let me know in the comments below is this uh well on our way to perfecting uh the you know what kind of robots <laughs> Big Screen has announced the Beyond 2, a next-generation VR headset that builds on the success of its predecessor. Some key highlights include an ultra-lightweight design, so coming down even further in weight from its predecessor, enhanced optics, upgraded pancake lenses deliver a 116-degree field of view, high-quality micro OLED panels provide a 5120 by 2560 resolution, with up to a 90 hertz refresh rate, which is pretty good. You're also gonna have an adjustable IPD, which you can manually adjust from 53 millimeters to 70 millimeters, supporting a 48 to 75 millimeter range. You're also gonna have optional eye tracking. The Beyond 2E variant features compact sensors for enhanced interactivity. You're gonna have custom fit options, which no other VR headset actually provides to this day. You'll be able to create a personalized face cushion using a 3D scan from an iPhone XR or newer, uh, or you can also use a universal fit uh, halo mount, but the custom fit option is definitely going to work better for you uh, in everything that you are doing. Uh, pricing and availability here, the Beyond 2 is gonna start at $1,019 shipping in April of 2025. And the Beyond 2E, which is a little bit more advanced, has a little bit more options coming in a little bit more expensive at $1,219 will start shipping in May of 2025. You're going to have a couple of color options here as well. So your carbon black, crystal clear, and nuclear orange. But Big Screen has commented that they have seen a strong market reaction to this very, very positive, stating that early sales have surpassed the original Beyond's four-month figures within just 10 hours of launch. So that's really awesome to see but definitely let me know what your thoughts are on this in the comments below is this something that you're going to be buying have you already pre-ordered it um i think i'll be picking this up at some point uh later this year on this week's episode of doom on a what doom has been running on a porsche 911 type 996 from 2004 which has been retrofitted with a pccm plus 
which is an official retrofit from Porsche, where the PCCM Plus is running on Android. And this is possible using a hidden debug menu to access the stock AOSP launcher. Then you can actually install and run Freedoms APK and boom, you have Doom and a Porsche. This is actually pretty cool. Um, just to have it in there and to be like, hey, what's up, bro? Uh, let's play some Doom. You wanna play some Doom on my Porsche? Uh, but yeah, definitely, uh, definitely interesting. Definitely not something I, th I would have thought you would put Doom on or even think about trying to install Doom on, but definitely let me know what your thoughts are on this in the comments below. What's something that you want to put Doom on? All right, guys, that's all the news I have for this week. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me. And until next time, remember to stay nerdy. Peace out, y'all.